Hi guys, back again, another recording. Uh, today we will discuss another SBQ of the ADC exam, past ADC papers. The topic is cold sore, but before that, um, I just want to share two nice things. The first thing is that uh, I have been awarded, if you can see here, uh, the Outstanding Pediatric Dentist Excellence Award in uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, the event is going to be held on 24th of February. I've been excited for it. Uh, it's nice to be appreciated. But yeah, uh, it also makes me more humble and uh, responsible because then people look forward to you. Um, it's nice as an Indian expat being recognized in another country. Uh, apart from that, another thing that was uh, approved yesterday was, uh, if you remember in my last video, I had said that I'm going to present a hands-on seminar, a full-day course on uh, strip crowns, uh, space maintainers, and uh, interceptive orthodontics. Uh, that has been approved by the DHA, that's the Dubai Health Authority, and we have been awarded like around 7 CME points. So it's quite a nice thing. I would love all the general dentists and all those practitioners, you know, who see children and would like to do minor procedures like providing space maintainers. Chair side, it's not the lab made. It's a preformed space maintainer, which you can do it there itself in 25 minutes. Uh, so I'll be taking my hands on for that. So that's been approved. Uh, we're planning to conduct it next month and... Uh, yeah, yesterday around for four hours, I was just preparing the presentation for interceptive orthodontics, like around 70 slides I prepared. I could not believe and there was yet so many things that I wanted to say, but then it would just exceed my time limit. But after making that presentation, I realized uh, it, it would be so much helpful. So I'm going to record that presentation sometime later and I'm going to release it on YouTube. So anybody who wants to learn basically how to diagnose and when to intervene, uh, or rather when to intercept the damaging problem it's going to be helpful because as a general practitioner myself when I had finished my BDS I had zero knowledge about interceptive the only thing I knew was an anterior crossbite that's it I didn't know when to intercept when to refer nothing it's only when I finished my post graduation that I was confident but yet I took uh, an ortho course you know to understand orthodontics because there's so many things in ortho that you're not aware of. So that course helped me and I keep on updating myself with um, ortho basis because I do a lot of ortho cases myself now. So yeah, uh, hopefully that is helpful. So yeah, let's get back and today's SBQ is uh, cold sore. So before we jump onto this question, let us just revise a bit about what is cold sore. Now cold sore is a common viral infection. You may have seen a lot of patients or you may have seen at least one patient in your lifetime having a cold sore. Uh, they are tiny fluid filled blisters on and around the lips. These blisters are often grouped together in patches. After the blister breaks, a scab forms that can last several days. Cold sores usually heal in two to three weeks without leaving a scar. I'm reading only the important stuff because question is going to be formulated on these stuff. So if you know this basic, you'll be able to answer all the questions absolutely correctly. Cold sores spread from person to person by close contact, such as kissing, which means if a father is having the advice you will give to him to not spread it to the son is to not be in contact. They are usually caused by HSV1 and less commonly by HSV2. Both of these virus can, can affect the mouth or genitals and can be spread by oral sex. The virus can spread even if you don't see the source. So just because you don't have a sore doesn't mean the virus is not there. There's no cure for cold sores. So that means uh, whatever treatment you're going to provide is basically symptomatic because as we read in the first paragraph, it's going to heal by itself. It's just going to take some time, but you can provide symptomatic relief. You cannot cure it. Prescription of antiviral medicines or creams can help sores heal more quickly. 
but they cannot prevent them from happening and they may make future outbreaks happen less often and be shorter and less serious. Another important line that you should know is that ultraviolet dry, uh, rays can damage the skin and trigger a recurrent cold sore. That trigger word is very important. Now, you see, you're giving an Australian exam to treat Australian people. And uh, Australia, as you're aware of, uh, has a more UV light intensity, if I can say. So, you're likely to encounter such cases. Hence, ADC has put this question in the exam. And you will get this exam, put this question in your exam. I mean, so far, almost in all the exams, one of these kinds of questions have always popped up, which is related to the geography of that area. So now let's see uh, what question can be asked and how we are going to answer that. Now, a 38-year-old patient who complained of lesions appearing frequently. See, the keyword here is appearing frequently. What's the synonym of appearing frequently is recurrent on his lip. He was otherwise healthy. So, there is no other medical problems which can lead to this sore be a opportunistic infection, which it can happen in a other immunocompromised status. But the question maintains that he is a healthy, happy family man. Means there is no polygamy kind of involved. So, they are trying to rule out HSV too, basically. Loves to play with his child after work. So... You see, uh, he likes to be in contact with his child after work. And he's a park ranger. He gets these lesions every summer. So they have mentioned that he does a uh, sports activity which involves him to be exposed to the UV light. And they also mentioned that only the summertime is the one where he gets the lesions because UV lights are more strong during the summer. So you see that paragraph that we uh, read earlier about the concept of cold source how the question is formulated on that. So don't just read this question as if it's telling you a story. No, it's giving you a keyword. The keyword here is appearing frequently, which means it's recurrent. It's leading you towards a diagnosis, you know. And he's healthy. So like I said, uh, there's no other stuff involved. And he's in contact with his child. And uh, he gets it every summer. So there's some component of UV light. But let's see what is the question asked. What do you see? The first thing. So, uh, somebody has solved this questionnaire, uh, one of my candidates, and they have marked the wrong answer, hence it's appearing wrong. When you will solve it, uh, if it's right, it will show a green mark. So, what do you see? Uh, vesicles, isolated big ulcers, spots or irregular ulcers. Now, let's go back. Now, as we read about the cold sore, it's a bunch of vesicles, right? It's not an ulcer for sure. Ulcer is a breach in the skin and it wouldn't have fluid filled cavities right this is a fluid filled a vesicle is a fluid filled balloon kind of a thing spots these are not spots irregular ulcers again they are not so even if you were confused you can still choose the right answer by elimination of the other three options so i would go with vesicles yeah how will you diagnose the lesion see number of things can happen on the lip and uh, Many of the times you may have to conduct a blood test or a serology test to diagnose it. But here, that entire paragraph which was given out here, this is not a story like I said. They were giving you keywords to lead you towards diagnosis. So when the clinical history is like this, the patient says this keeps on happening every summer and I'm a happy family man and I just go out for a park range and otherwise I'm healthy. Your most probable diagnosis should be a cold sore. So, how will you diagnose the lesion? Polymerase chain reaction PCR test is not a wrong answer. Okay, because if you want to get the 100% sure sure diagnosis, best. But is it required? No. Serology, serology is again um, some form of invasive test where you just check the viral load basically. Clinical presentation and history. So, though the first and the second options are not wrong, but they are invasive options and I would not opt for them. So, I would go with clinical presentation and history because it's very clear and the patient knows he gets it every summer. So, you pretty much know it is HSV. Now, what is the lesion? Now, they are asking the actual question. 
Is it primary herpetic gingivitis stomatitis? Is it secondary herpes simplex? It is herpingina or herpes zoster. See, primary herpetic gingivitis stomatitis they have given. If they would have said primary herpes simplex, I could have chosen that. But they just said primary herpetic gingival stomatitis. Now, primary herpetic gingival stomatitis is basically bleeding of the gums. There are a lot of ulcers on the gums. They are not vesicles out there. But if the same question I'm repeating had said primary herpes simplex, I would have chosen that as my answer. Since they have not given that answer, they have given another terminology, which is an absolutely different uh, problem which involves a lot of fever, irritation and it usually is caused in less than uh, and it's caused in preschool children. I'm talking about primary herpetic gingivitis stomatitis and it's also caused by primary herpes simplex virus. So here they haven't given the name of the virus in the first option. They have just given the name of the disease. And so I'm not going to choose that. So if you choose that, getting confused, thinking, oh, this looks like primary herpes simplex, it's wrong. You see, they have not mentioned those exact words. Second option is herp uh, secondary herpes simplex. Now, we read already in the concept clearing paragraph that it can be caused majorly by primary herpes simplex and less by secondary herpes simplex. But still, I don't have the primary herpes simplex here as the option. I'm going to choose secondary herpes simplex. You see how my brain is working. This is how your brain is supposed to work. Herpangina. Herpangina is not this. Herpangina is something else. Herpes zooster. Again, this is not herpes zooster. If you want to read more about herpangina and herpes zooster, pause this video. Go read. Come back and continue the video. The answer is secondary herpes simplex. Now, I've given the feedback. Read through it. And how to avoid his kid contracting the disease. Now you see why they had mentioned in the paragraph that the man loves to play with his kid. Now your job is also to make sure that none of the other family members or other people have this. So what you're going to say? Avoid contact until the lesion passes away. Because it spreads by contact, you see. So here the answer is avoid direct contact with the kid. Well, I hope this is clear for you and we'll solve more questions and if you like the video and if any help you're getting out of my videos, do leave it in the comment. Your comments motivate me to actually find time from my busy schedule, sit down, open everything, record, upload, you know. So every day at least I get one message, minimum, you know appreciating the video or just telling me how helpful they have been so that kind of motivates me so uh, yeah, it would be nice if you could leave a comment it's nice to connect with you all i really appreciate all the candidates it's nice to be in contact uh, so yeah have a nice day bye, -bye.